Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're all having a lovely evening. A lot of you have been asking me, what do I think of the fact that cars will have a remote kill switch in them that can be operated by the government or stop you from being able to drive your vehicle? This reminds me of a similar thing that was showing up in my comments a lot recently, which is what do you think of the fact that the New York District Attorney is no longer going to prosecute a lot of crimes? If you know, unless you kill somebody, he's just going to let you go. That was showing up in my comments a lot. I thought it was a little on the crazy side, so I decided to do research together with all of you, and I did it in a live stream. What we did is we read the actual memo. It took about an hour and a half. I edited it down to an hour video for the main channel where we actually read through every single one of the statutes. We looked up what 150.65 and all those other things were on New York Senate or government website so that we could figure out what was actually going on. And what we found there is that he is still prosecuting the crimes. He's simply prosecuting some things that used to be felonies as misdemeanors and using something called restorative justice to get people out of prison sooner if they committed certain crimes. To be 100% clear, I don't support this district attorney. I did not vote for this district attorney. And I disagree with many of the policies outlined in his memo. But that doesn't mean simply because I disagree with him and I didn't vote for him and I think he has a different ideology than me that I am then going to straw man his points and claim that something that's just fundamentally not true. I can disagree with everything he's doing while simultaneously saying he is still prosecuting crime. Not in the manner that I like, but, but he's doing it. And I'd like to do that here. Now, is there a remote kill switch? Is it going to be oper operable by anybody or anything like, you know, what's going on here? So again, what I'd like to do is I'd like to read the text of the actual bill for all of you, and I'd like to give you my thoughts as we go through it together. So this is HR 3684. I am not going to be reading a news website or a commentator. We're going to be going straight to congress.gov to figure out what's going on here. The first thing is I just figured I would just search for the word kill and see if anything's there. And as you can see, if I, it's, it's really just the word skill is there. If I take away the space, then it's mostly skills or skills training. But the word kill does not exist. So we're going to have to dig a little bit deeper to figure out what it is that people are talking about here. So as we scroll down this, most of this just, you know, seems like typical infrastructure billish stuff, Indian affairs, multimodal freight transportation, infrastructure project assistance, rail, Amtrak reforms. All of this stuff seems, I mean, like pretty boring. Uh, we continue scrolling and scrolling, and I'm pretty sure that what you guys are talking about is this. Advanced Impaired Driving Technology, Section 24220. So let's read 24220 together, shall we? It says, Advanced Impaired Driving Technology, and I'll zoom in a little bit to make it easier for those of you who are reading along with me. Findings. Congress finds that, one, alcohol-impaired driving fatalities represents approximately one-third of all highway fatalities in the United States each year. Two, in 2019, there were 10,142 alcohol-impaired driving fatalities in the United States involving drivers with a blood alcohol concentration level of 0.08 or higher, and 68% of the crashes that resulted in those fatalities involved a driver with a blood alcohol concentration level of 0.15 or higher. Three, the estimated economic cost for the alcohol-impaired driving in 2010 was $44 billion. So what I'm noticing here, and this is just my, my early comments before I've actually read the entire thing, the first thing that goes off in my head is that you're laying it on heavy. Again, instead of saying, here's the policy, here's what we want to do, you're going out of your way to list all of these things that are horrible, which most ordinary people would agree that are horrible. $44 billion is a lot of money to waste. Uh, thousands of people dying, 10,000 people or so a year is, um, is a high number. The fact that people drive drunk is a bad thing. The fact that many of these crashes are happening when people are horribly drunk is a bad thing. Uh, and these are all things we can agree with. It's kind of like if I were wanted, if I had something that I wanted to do that was something that was kind of radical, I might not start by giving you the radical proposal. I might start by laying it on heavy and listing a bunch of horrible, horrible things that are bad to get you in the mindset of, oh my God, we should do something. I, w I need you to get to the point where you're going, somebody should do something, do something, do something. So for instance, you know, if I said, uh, 80 children in this neighborhood are kidnapped every year. 40 of those children are murdered. 10 of those children are sexually assaulted. Uh, five of them are tortured and then their parents see it. When that happens, the parents of those people, half of them commit suicide. When they commit suicide, there winds up being, uh, I don't know, a uh, void in the economic activity in the community that costs this much. It kind of feels like I'm laying it on, like I'm not getting to the policy. If I had a policy that were 
something that were popular, I wouldn't have to lead with the horror story. Uh, but if my policy were something like, all people in this town must wear a camera that is live streaming at all times what their activities are, that, that, that's something nobody's going to agree with that. So I kind of have to start with something horrible to try to prep you for what my policy is going to be. And I, I feel, this is just a feeling, but it feels like this is being laid on heavy. So I'm kind of ready for it to be something radical that is proposed here, because if it wasn't radical, you wouldn't have to lay it on heavy like this for, uh, you know, in, in the very beginning. And to be clear, I, I don't read through most uh, bill. Maybe this is just a standard thing, but that's just my first impression as an uneducated person who barely graduated high school who used to fix MacBooks for a living. According to the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, advanced drunk and impaired driving prevention technology can prevent more than 9,400 alcohol-impaired driving fatalities annually. Oh, wow. Look, they, they gave us a problem, and they presented a solution that an insurance institute said will work. Yay! To ensure the prevention of alcohol-impaired driving fatalities, advanced drunk and impaired driving prevention and technology must be standard equipment in all new passenger motor vehicles. Definitions. In this section, advanced drunk and impaired driving prevention technology. The term advanced drunk and impaired driving prevention technology means a system that A, one, passively, okay, we actually went from one to A and then to sub one, that's kind of cool, or I, passively monitor the performance of a driver of a motor vehicle to accurately identify whether that driver may be impaired. Two, prevent or limit motor vehicle operation if an impairment is detected. B, can, one, passively and accurately detect whether the blood alcohol concentration of a driver of a motor vehicle is equal to or greater than the blood alcohol concentration described in Section 163A of Title 23, United States Code, and two, prevent or limit motor vehicle operation if a blood alcohol concentration above the legal limit is detected, or C, it's a combination of systems described in subparagraphs A and B. Two, new, the term new with respect to a passenger motor vehicle means that the passenger motor vehicle is a new vehicle as defined in section 37.3 of title 49 code of federal regulations or a successor regulation and b has not been purchased for purposes other than resale three passenger motor vehicle the term passenger motor vehicle as the meaning given the term in section 32101 of title 49 united states code Four, secretary. The term secretary means the secretary of transportation acting through the administrator of the National Highway Traffic and Safety Associ Administration. C, advanced drunk and impaired driving technology, prevention technology, safety standard, subject to subsection E, and not later than three years after the date of enactment of this act, the secretary shall issue a final rule prescribing a federal motor vehicle safety standard under section 3011 of Title 49 United States Code that requires passenger motor vehicles manufactured after the effective date of that standard to be equipped with advanced drunk and impaired driving prevention technology. D. Requirement. To allow sufficient time for the manufacturer compliance, the compliance date of the rule issued under subsection C shall be not earlier than two years and not more than three years after the date on which the ruling is issued. E. Timing. If the secretary determines that the federal motor vehicle safety st standard required under subsection C cannot meet the requirements and considerations described in subsections A and B of section 3111 of Title 49, United States Code by the applicable date, the secretary, one, may extend the time period to such date as the secretary determines to be necessary, but not later than a date that is three years after the date described in subsection C. Two, shall not later than the date described in subsection C and not less frequently than annually thereafter until the date on which the rule under that subsection is issued submit to the Committee on Commerce, Science, and Transportation of the Senate and Committee on Energy and Commerce of the House of Representatives a report describing as of the date of submission of the report a. The reasons for not prescribing a federal motor vehicle safety standard under Section 3111 of Title 49 United States Code that requires advanced drunk drive and impaired driving prevention technology in all new passenger motor vehicles b. The deployment of advanced drunk and impaired driving prevention technology in vehicles. C. Any information related to the ability of vehicle manufacturers to include advanced drunk and impaired driving prevention technology in the new passenger motor vehicles. And D. An anticipated timeline for the prescribing of the vehicle, federal motor vehicle safety standard described in subsection G. C. 
And three, wow, I impaired myself. If the federal motor vehicle safety standard required by subsection C has not been finalized by the date that is 10 years after the date of enactment of this act, shall submit to the Committee on Commerce, Science, and Transportation of the Senate and the Committee on Energy and Commerce of the House of Representatives a report describing A, the reasons why the Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standard has not been finalized, B, the barriers to finalizing the Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standard, and C, recommendations to Congress to facilitate the Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standard. So what do we have there? Um, the idea here is seems quite simple to me. Advanced drunk and impaired driving technology. The idea here is to be able to monitor the performance of the driver of a motor vehicle, to identify whether that driver is impaired, and then limit the operation of that vehicle if an impairment is detected, and they have an out where if they can't figure out how to make this work by the time that they want it to work, that they're allowed to ask for a couple more years but not an indefinite amount of time, and that if they're not able to make this work, they need to say why. So I don't see here anything about there being a remote kill switch where the police or, um, or you know, the military or anything like that can remotely disable your car, where Andrew Cuomo realizes that I'm not supposed to be going outside, but I've driven outside, and Andrew Cuomo can say, fuck that YouTube guy and disable my car. That's not what I see here. From what I read here, and I could be wrong, and if I am wrong, please let me know how I've misinterpreted this. I will pin your comments so that everybody can see it, and I will make an, a correction video. Nothing here appears to specifically say that somebody else, whether it is law enforcement, the military, or your, your tyrannical governor, will be able to remotely disable your car. It seems to be that the system is going to be some contained within the vehicle itself, and it is going to be monitoring what it is that you do with the vehicle. Uh, I... I'm obviously not a fan of this. I mean, if anybody's ever tried a Tesla with full self-driving, I mean, the computer has its idea of what is actually safe, and then there's reality. Um, there's uh, There are many cars that will, will, will uh, give you nicks on your safety score if they, think, if they see that you're driving on a lane marker. However, sometimes there are very, very wide trucks on two-way roads, and that wide truck on a two-way road may not be driving as well as he, as he should be, and when that happens, he may be going over the double yellow line. When that's the case, I'm gonna wanna ride the right side of my lane as much as I can because I don't wanna get smashed into by a truck that is going over the double yellow line. The car, very many, many cars are too stupid to realize that what I'm trying to do is maintain a safe distance between myself and the truck that is going over. It's going to simply say, you're over the lane marker, you're over the lane marker, you're over the lane marker, and beep at me. I know better than the computer. I realize that I would rather be mildly over a lane marker on a highway that nobody walks on than get hit by a giant truck. Would that mean that the car sees me as impaired and then turn it off? Is it my car's business to figure out whether or not I am impaired? Given how bad so much of this technology is at this point in time, do I trust it to be able to do this stuff and figure it out? I still remember when Elon Musk was saying that full self-driving it will be here in two months or so. Um, the, 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 this doesn't seem to be written in the way that it's being talked about in most of my comments. Most of my comments are making it sound like my governor, or a policeman, or some random hacker will be able to disable the motor or engine in my new vehicle if I were to purchase a vehicle in 2028. If that's possible, I don't see why it is that this law is what's making it possible. If somebody's able to hack into the car, I think that that's something that they would have been able to do regardless of this law, because nothing in this law really seems to imply that remote access is required to be able to do this. The fact that most cars nowadays have an internet connection and a computer in it is independent of what it is this law is asking for. This law appears to only be asking for a way to monitor if the person driving the car is impaired, and if the car believes the person is impaired, then stop them from driving the car. To be 100% clear, I don't like this at all. I don't agree with it. I would not vote for this. And I would not want to vote for any politician that was okay with this or that is responsible for this ever being written into law. 
I don't like this. But to be clear, from my limited understanding and what I'm reading, there's nothing in here that specifically requires that this be a remote kill switch. It, again, you can have a system, I mean, realistically speaking, you could have a system that doesn't connect to the internet at all, that is running a program that is monitoring whether or not it believes I'm impaired or whether or not it believes I'm drunk based on whatever sensor. And technically, I mean, it is possible to create that seemingly without having it connect to the internet. I mean, even though like the realistic, the, the realistic uh, outlook on this is that most cars are, not all of them are connected to the internet nowadays. I don't like this personally. I understand the fact that drunk driving is horrible. I don't like that people drive drunk. Um, I, I've never driven after drinking. Like really, I mean, driving is scary enough as it is. It really is. Like there's enough stuff that just pops out of nowhere. People that go through lights, people that, you know, run across the street when they shouldn't, people that like almost like, they smash into me or try to smash into me because they can't tell because there's a blind spot in their mirror and they don't know how to look through this before they make a turn on the highway. There's enough scary stuff out there. It, and it's scary enough to do long drives with the way people drive, even when I am fully attend, uh, have eaten, am well rested and anything else. I, I don't even like driving early in the morning, to be honest with you. Like if I wake up at five or six and I'm groggy, I'll just, I'll go back, I'll go back to sleep or say I'll drive later. I don't even want to drive, much less driving drunk. I, I'm not a fan of driving drunk, but I can think that it's bad that people drive drunk and simultaneously be against this. The reason that I'm against this is because for several reasons. A, I don't trust the technology. I fundamentally don't trust this technology to actually do what it is saying it's going to do. And I don't trust it being good enough in four years to know the difference between me maneuvering around a pothole, me trying to avoid crashing into somebody who's done something stupid, me hovering over a lane marker because I don't want to get smashed into by a truck that is, dr for all I know, driving drunk himself and going over the lane marker. Uh, that's one reason. The second reason is because all cars are internet connected, I don't like, I don't like the idea. It's one thing if you get access to the tele, you know, some basic data in the car. It's one thing if you're able to get access to, I don't know, what, what radio station I'm using or something. I don't like the idea of somebody being able to remotely disable the engine if they were able to take advantage of the fact that the reality, even though this build does not require that the car be internet connected, that nowadays every single car is internet connected. When you combine internet connectivity with the ability to remotely detect how I'm driving, or I mean, the, the, not remotely, the ability to, to detect how I am driving, and then decide whether or not you want to disable the car because of that. When you combine those two things, one that is enshrined in the law, one that is not enshrined in the law, but that is practical reality, you end up with a recipe uh, for disaster there. And uh, the third thing is, I know, I'm going to get a lot of people rolling my eyes at me for this, is the, the slow encroachment on your freedom. I'm not saying that you should be able to drive drunk. I'm not saying that you should drive drunk. I think it's wrong. I think it's a fucked up thing to do. And I think you're doing a shitty thing to every single person on the road. Your assessment of whether or not you're in good shape to drive when you're drunk is very different from the reality. Being drunk makes people way more confident. Uh, if you want to see um, somebody who doesn't know how to fight when they're drunk and you listen to some of the things they say to people that do know how to fight, and if you've ever been the person that's kind of like, yo, come over here, you, you get what I'm saying. People that are drunk get way too confident. I don't think it's a good thing. And I look down on you as a human being, if that's something that you're doing um, at all, honestly, not much less on a regular basis. That being said, is it really the technology's place? Is it the cars, your car's place to tell you whether or not you can use it when you have paid 20 or 40 or 60 or 80 or $100,000 for that vehicle? And do we want to submit to this idea that it is not a police officer that's going to tell us whether or not we can drive? It is not our friends or family or, tr or our spouse that can tell us that, but the, I, the actual machine itself that is going to disable us from doing it based on its assessment. Do we want to, um, to open ourselves up to uh, being assessed by the devices that we buy? Like, yeah, I'm using this computer, but this computer is not observing me. It's not figuring out whether I should be using it or not. It's not like figuring out, Lewis, you're writing a six-page comment in response to a YouTube troll. You have 1.7 million subscribers. Don't waste your time on this. I'm turning off for your mental health kind of thing. Don't get me wrong. If it did that, it'd probably be a good thing from time to time. Most certainly sometimes there's some angry customer emails that I've gotten from people who have treated our staff not very nicely. Maybe from, it may be for my own good. But is it my computer's place to decide that? Is it my car's place to decide it? And once we have made the leap to my car 
can now decide whether or not I can use it because it prevents drunk driving, does that now open the door for, well, your car thinks that you weren't driving as well as you should? Or, well, your car thinks you didn't get enough sleep? Well, your car thinks that you're talking too much. And if you're talking that much, you're probably not paying attention to the road. There's all these little small encroachments. And I'll be honest with you, the slippery slope argument is an argument that I really would not be as open to if it wasn't for the past five to 10 or 15 years. Whether we're talking about the Patriot Act, whether we're talking about getting metadata for everybody's you know, phone calls and e emails with a, all this kind of crazy crap without a warrant, whether we are talking about the ability of the government to call you not essential and tell you that you're not allowed to open your business, you're not allowed to go to work, you're not allowed to make money. Stop doing that. That, that, that's, that is now against the law. Uh, this, I don't feel like giving them more power over my devices or my personal life to that extent. If you want to tell me that I am not allowed to install a, you know, a 100 amp electrical outlet without it being licensed, without being a licensed electrician, yeah, sure, I'll give you that authority. But the idea that once I have a driver's license that the car is going to decide whether I'm allowed to drive, I think once I give you that, that's just sticking the tifton. And after I've allowed you to do that, you're probably going to take the entire shaft. That's, that, 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 that's my gut feeling on this. And again, it is a gut feeling. It's, it's not based on an understanding of the future. I haven't read any politicians' minds. It's not based on anything written down, because again, there's nothing in this document that implies that this needs to be something that can be a remote kill switch, where my local policeman can tap a button. And again, if I am interpreting this wrong, please do let me know. But from what I read here, it does not sound like a local cop is just gonna be able to tap a button and turn off my car. Um, but honestly, even if that... Uh, isn't the case, even if, even, that, like, even if that's not what's written in here, I'm still against it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'll see you in the next video. Bye now. I gotta wash this damn stain out of my shirt.